A very good and warm welcome to you to this service of spiritual communion as we celebrate Jesus's presentation in the temple, a day also known as Candlemas. Candlemas is sometimes spoken of as the day when the church's year changes direction. We stop looking back to Christmas and begin to look forward to Lent and Good Friday and Easter. It's the growing time of the year, a season that will offer us plenty of opportunity to practice and grow in wisdom, so that like Anna and Simeon, we too can recognise the moments of God's coming and rejoice in God's love every day. From medieval times, this service was also used to bless the candles which will be used throughout the year. Today, due to the COVID restrictions, and the impracticality of buying and then storing a year's worth of candles all at once, this is not possible. But having a candle or tea light to hand to reflect upon during this service is something you could do as we move through the liturgy. And so let's begin in the temple with Simeon and Anna and allow ourselves to be still for the presence of the Lord. presence of the Lord, the Holy One is here. Come bow before Him now with reverence and fear. In Him no sin is found. We stand of the Lord, the Holy One is here. Be still for the glory of the Lord is shining all around. He burns with holy fire, with splendor he is crowned. we draw closer to this time of togetherness. Give us tears to see the wonder of your presence. Give us tears to see the wasting of your people. Give us tears to see the wounding of your son. We are the race that helped to make the wood on which you were crucified, and we still misuse your creation. We are the race that helped to make the nails that pierced your body, yet we still use work for gain at others' expense. We are the race that did nothing to stop your betrayers, yet we are still ruled by comfort or cowardice. So let's say together, O God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, our only Saviour, the Prince of Peace, give us grace seriously 
to lay to heart the great dangers we are in by our unhappy divisions. We confess our hatred and prejudice, and all else that hinders us from godly union and concord. As there is but one body and one spirit, and one hope of our calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of us all, so may we henceforth be all of one heart and soul, united in one holy bond of truth and peace, of faith and charity, and with one mouth give you glory, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, who in Jesus Christ has given us a kingdom that cannot be destroyed, forgive us our sins, open our eyes to God's truth, strengthen us to do God's will, and give us the joy of his kingdom, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The first reading is taken from the third chapter of the book of Malachi, beginning at the first verse. Thus says the Lord God, See, I am sending my messenger to prepare the way before me, and the Lord whom you seek will suddenly come to his temple. The messenger of the covenant in whom you delight, indeed, he is coming, says the Lord of hosts. But who can endure the day of his coming, and who can stand when he appears? For he is like a refiner's fire, and like fuller's soap. He will sit as a refiner and purifier of silver, and he will purify the descendants of Levi, and refine them like gold and silver, until they present offerings to the Lord in righteousness. Then the offering of Judah and Jerusalem will be pleasing to the Lord, as in the days of old, and as in former years. Then I will draw near to you for judgment. I will be swift to bear witness against the sorcerers, against the adulterers, against those who swear falsely, against those who oppress the hired workers in their wages, the widow and the orphan, against those who thrust aside the alien, and do not fear me, says the Lord of hosts. Thanks be to God. The second reading is taken from the second chapter of the letter to Hebrews, beginning at the 14th verse. Since the children have flesh and blood, he too shared in their humanity, so that by his death he might destroy him who holds the power of death, that is, the devil, and free those who in all their lives were held in slavery by their fear of death. For surely it is not angels he helps, but Abraham's descendants. For this reason he had to be made like his brothers in every way, in order that he might become merciful and faithful high priest in service to God, and that he might make atonement for the sins of the people. Because he himself suffered when he was tempted, he is able to help those who are being tempted. Thanks be to God. The Gospel reading is taken from the second chapter of the Gospel according to St Luke, beginning at the 22nd verse. When the time of their purification according to the law of Moses had been completed, Joseph and Mary took him to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. As it is written in the law of the Lord, every firstborn male is to be consecrated to the Lord, and to offer a sacrifice in keeping with what is said in the law of the Lord's, a pair of doves or two young pigeons. Now there was a man in Jerusalem called Simeon, who was righteous and devout. He was waiting for the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit was upon him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not die before he had seen the Lord's Christ. Moved by the Spirit, he went into the temple courts. When the parents brought the child Jesus to do for him what the custom of the law required, Simeon took him in his arms and praised God, saying, Sovereign Lord, as you have promised, you now dismiss your servant in peace. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the sight of all people, a light for revelation to the Gentiles, and for glory to your people Israel. The child's father and mother marvelled at what was said about him. Then Simeon blessed them and said to Mary, his mother, This child is destined to cause the fall and rising of many in Israel, and to be a sign that will be spoken against, so that the thoughts of many hearts will be revealed, and a sword will pierce your own soul too. There was also a prophetess, Anna, the daughter of Phanuel, of the tribe of Asher, she was very old. She had lived with her husband seven years after her marriage, and then was a widow until she was eighty-four. 
she never left the temple, but worshipped night and day, fasting and praying. Coming up to them at that very moment, she gave thanks to God and spoke about the child to all who were looking forward to the redemption of Jerusalem. When Joseph and Mary had done everything required by the law of the Lord, they returned to Galilee to their own town of Nazareth, and the child grew and became strong. He was filled with wisdom, and the grace of God was upon him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Joseph and Mary were young people of limited means who struggled to get to Bethlehem for the census. While there was no room at the inn, one might wonder if the new dad actually possessed the resources for a hotel stay. He stood by, helpless and poor, watching the mother of his child give birth next to the beasts of burden. After his divine child's arrival in the world, he witnesses shepherds and others worshipping him. Then he was faced with the human role as a provider in the time beyond birth. All he had to offer his son was a life tied to the limitations of a father's social location. The text tells us that Mary and Joseph, who Matthew says were later blessed with gifts from kings, could not afford to offer even a lamb. They presented the gift assigned to the poor, a pair of turtle doves. Over and again, people told them of the blessings they had in their arms. Every day they struggled to make ends meet. We live in a society where it is hard to understand the blessings in poverty. Mary and Joseph, like many poor parents in our midst today, were trying to be faithful, but the journey was not easy. In the context of the capitalization of our generation, it's hard to accept the idea of being blessed, but not preposterous. The challenge for us to wrestle with is the injustice that many people of faith face. They are blessed. They hold new life and future possibilities in their arms. They possess faith, and yet they must find a way to afford the social expectations of church life. For many of the poor but faithful in our time, this is still a painful reality. As people of faith in a largely privileged nation, we have an obligation to care for poor families in tangible ways so that they can raise their children with limited burdens. We miss out as a community when we fail to acknowledge that all children in our midst are a gift to the world. Perhaps we are called to create a society with a positive regard for struggling, faithful parents because we believe we are co-stewards of the future. Perhaps this text is pleading with those of us in this generation to create a more just society for the, for the children who come into the world through parents of limited means. We have questions with which to grapple. If Jesus were born today to young, poor parents in the UK, would he be better off now than when he was over 2,000 years ago? Will we answer the call to create a society that makes sure everyone has adequate health care, clothing, food, shelter and education, an especially hot topic at present. My mentor will always say, if you're not willing to do it, don't bother praying about it. And he's right. We have an obligation as a people of faith beyond offering a verbal blessing. Tomorrow is a new month in this new year. Despite our current situation, there is much we can do. What will your choice be? Amen. Let us pray. Lord, as with Candlemas we reach the end of the beginning of that great story that has no ending, we now begin to turn our faces towards Lent and the time of reflection that follows from it. Help us with the passing of time to grow in wisdom and simplicity, like Simeon and Anna, through listening attentively to your word. As we seek to be faithful followers of the essence of your message, may the whole church submit to the fire that refines and purifies as it turns back to the single truth that you were made in Palestine and live today in bread and wine. Lord, we thank you for the light that illumines our darkness. In your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, you have sent us a light to enlighten the nations 
And still there are people in darkness who pay no heed. We pray for all the darkness in the world. And for those places where civil strife makes it almost impossible to live and love with neighbours. Even though without such love, there seems no peaceful end in sight. Deliver your people from evil, we pray. Lord, we thank you for the light that illumines our darkness. In your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, help us to heal the generation gap. Teach the old to learn from the euthanism of the youth. Their ability to see new flowers in the garden of life. And teach the young that the old, too, may have something to teach them. The ability to see things from a less rushed perspective. When the fever of doing gives way to the peace of simply being. Lord, we thank you for the light that illumines our darkness. In your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, look with compassion on those who are afraid, who feel inadequate in the face of life's daily demands. In the name of your Son, who suffered for us even unto death, give to all those who are in pain the strength to face the future, a confidence in your wisdom, and the ability to draw strength from the knowledge that underneath are your everlasting arms. Lord, we thank you for the light that illumines our darkness. In your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we pray for those who are coming to the end of their earthly lives. Grant to those that life encouraged us by their light, the fullness of your presence. May they know the peace of Simeon, of all life well led, and fulfilment at last, as they climb the mountain of God and stand in your holy place. Lord, we thank you for the light that illumines our darkness. In your mercy, hear our prayer. Amen. Picture the Last Supper. Cast in your mind's eye the bread and wine. Perhaps gaze upon that which is in front of you. We bless you, High King of all creation. Through your goodness we have this bread and wine to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become our spiritual food and drink. As we bring this bread to you, we offer you also our energies and creating, our relationships and achieving, the sap of life rising, the seeds of life flowering, the resources of life acquiring, the fun of life enjoying, the raw materials of life building, the intelligence of life organising, the feelings of life communicating. You who put the ear in corn, take these ordinary things and transform them into the glory of your presence. We pour out this wine and offer to you the woes of life outpouring, the waning powers of life, the diseases and disappointments, the hurts and hindrances, failures caused by our stupidity or by circumstances beyond our control. As grapes are crushed to make wine, so we offer all who are crushed by hunger or loneliness, by violence or abuse. We lift up our hearts and lift them to God alone. We lift up our heads and lift them to God alone. We lift up our voices and lift them to God alone. High King of the Universe, who sustains the world, who brought forth the earth. You breathe wisdom into all your creation till we reflect your threefold friendship. In our pain and sorrow, we cry out to you. Tender lamb slain before the world began, perfect sacrifice for our sins. Grant that these gifts of bread and wine may be for us his body, and his blood, who on the night he was betrayed took bread and broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. You, who put the beam into the sun and moon, take all this and transform it into the deep, rich wine of everlasting life. In our pain and sorrow we cry out to you. 
After supper he took the cup, gave you thanks, and said to them, This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. This is the table, not of the church, but of the Lord, and it is to be made ready for those who love him and want to love him more. So come, you who have much faith and you who have little, you who have been here often and you who have not been for a long time, you who try to follow and you who feel they have failed. Come, not because I invite you, it is our Lord, and it is his will that those who want him should meet him here. And now we say together the prayer that Jesus himself taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Christ, the Son of God, perfect in you the image of his glory, and gladden your hearts with the good news of his kingdom, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, be among you and remain with you always. Amen. So thank you so much for joining us today. If you have lit a candle at any point in this service, do be sure to extinguish it and never leave a flame unattended. Thank you, Leanne, for our readings and Killian, all the way from University in Farnham for recording our prayers. I hope you are all staying safe and sane and I look forward to welcoming you again soon. Until next time, I hope you have a blessed week. Goodbye.